Hello everybody and welcome back to this lecture. In this video, we are going to be discussing a unique batch of carbohydrates that are very very important for one's health and well-being. The topic is microbiota accessible carbohydrates. So as a short form, I am going to be referring to microbiota accessible carbohydrates as MAX. In this lecture, we are going to explore what are MAX, what are the dietary sources of MAX and how do these microbiota accessible carbohydrates improve one's health particularly in athletes helping them in their sports performance. So just going back to the first chapter where we were understanding where the energy is derived from and how carbohydrates are the most important macronutrients that offer calories for an athlete to be able to exercise in full potential. Carbohydrate rich foods offer 4 kilocalories per gram and they are not limited to only giving you energy for exercise or workouts. And if you recollect our discussion, they also spare proteins for muscle building and among other functions, they contain fibers. And if you remember, mainly we discuss two types of fibers, a soluble fiber that forms a gel, helps control appetite, is good for weight management and also for individuals to manage blood sugars. There is also the indigestible fiber which eases bowel movement and can prevent constipation. So that brings us to another type of carbohydrate which is now coined as microbiota accessible carbohydrates. So what is unique about MAX? These fibers are neither insoluble or soluble fiber but are a unique variety that will be fermented by the gut microbiome or the good bacteria and will lead to certain changes that are favorable for a human body. The human gastrointestinal tract is made up of trillions of microbes or bacteria and that is called the microbiome. So these bugs ferment macrobiota accessible carbohydrates and lead to certain metabolites. This entire process of fermentation by the microbes takes place in the large intestine or the colon of the human body. Let us go forward in understanding how these metabolites which are made from the fermentation of the macrobiota accessible carbohydrates can influence the health of an individual. In this lecture, we are going to be mainly focusing on the MAX that are derived from the plant source in our daily diet. If you recollect, I have always emphasized that a varied diet is what is favorable for a good microbiome. Max are available across fresh produce as fruits, vegetables, grains and also pulses. The fruit banana is not only rich in calories or carbohydrates that can fuel exercise, give you a lot of potassium but if you remember that eating a bowl of oatmeal or a banana increases the dopamine making one feel good. But most importantly, a banana is also a fruit that feeds the good bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. Apart the apple and kiwis, the local jamun is also a fruit worthy to improve the gut bacteria. With the advent of globalism, it is not challenging to procure asparagus or artichoke hearts. However, sticking to our simple Indian origin and our cultural cuisine of very rich use of onions and garlic perhaps had a cue on how these our ancestors perhaps had a cue on how onion and garlic was very very important as a prebiotic fiber to improve one's health. There is a reason why there is a suggestion to ensure half your intake of grains must come from unpolished or whole grains. They are fiber rich, 
not just an insoluble, but also that they offer max. The beta glucan of the rolled oats is very important in feeding the good bacteria. Similarly, pulses not only give you soluble fiber that can lower cholesterol and is good for blood sugar control, but they are also very rich in max. It is worthy to note that cooking and cooling rice cuts its calories and the entire mechanism that is responsible for converting this rice to resistant starch is the reason that the body cannot absorb the starch from a resistant starch. But in this entire process, there is something very interesting that happens is that these resistant starches reach the large intestine where the fermentation occurs by the good bacteria and they lead to short chain fatty acids which in turn can be interestingly used for a small amount of energy. Similarly, cooling of pasta, freezing of bread and even cooling potato converts the carbohydrates to resistant starch which feeds these bugs in the colon. The bacterial fermentation of Max has innumerable health benefits. From altering appetite and helping in body composition transformation to the way one feels due to the change in the neurotransmitters can be one of the several benefits of these short chain fatty acids and let us learn some more important functions of these short chain fatty acids. One important role of fermentation of the max is its ability to influence the nutrient absorption thereby enhancing the nutritional status of an athlete. Short chain fatty acids lower inflammation which can be very crucial for an athlete who is overtrained and can have high oxidative stress and thereby these max also improve immune function. Acetate is one of the short chain fatty acids and a very small amount of this short chain fatty acids can be used for energy. Propionate is another short chain fatty acids that influences glucose metabolism and in several ways this can help control appetite and also manage weight thereby preventing obesity. Butyrate is the last short chain fatty acids and for an athlete after an intense bout of exercise, butyrate can have anti-inflammatory function thereby improving the recovery. The fermentation of macrobiota accessible carbohydrates by the good bacteria in the large intestine or colon thereby improves the overall metabolic health. I am very sure that you have come across the gut brain axis. The gut is the second brain and 90% of the serotonin is absorbed in the gut. Serotonin is a calming hormone and in some way these max which are fermented by the bacteria have a direct correlation to one's immunity. The good bugs fight the bad bacteria as pathogens thereby preventing illnesses and in fact there is so much reference in the scientific community about how these macrobiota accessible carbohydrates can even prevent non-communicable disease such as obesity and diabetes. So you can imagine that somebody who is well balanced must be on a good balanced diet with plenty of fiber that feeds these good bacteria thereby synthesizing more serotonin or the calming hormone which can help lower stress and keep one grounded. In COVID, there was a new dimension of immune function which was called the gut and lung axis. People with good gut microbiome had better immune function and could fight COVID. And as a matter of fact, even those athletes who are on prebiotic fibers 
or a consumption of good probiotics through diet or supplement can improve the immune function and most importantly can prevent upper respiratory tract infections which is commonly seen in overtrained athletes who recover very poorly. So what's one simple way for athletes to incorporate max in their diet? The first step is to begin with adequate fruits and vegetable intake. Young children are advised to take at least three cups of vegetables while adolescents and young athletes can consume between four and five serves and that can be even half a katori of a cooked vegetable or even a cup of vegetable or a sabzi or a salad. Two to three local seasonal fruits are always important in daily diet particularly keeping in mind the ones we have already discussed in the previous slides. To clarify, you do not need to import expensive gourmet foods or indulge only in kiwi. You can use the local berries, even the black or blueberries as jamun that can be easily available and locally sourced. While the highlight is the food first approach, ensuring a variety of grains including whole grains and not just dals but pulses with the skin to ensure that there is a limitation to the consumption of highly processed foods which are loaded with sugar, refined oils or unfavorable additives. It is also important to note that an athlete can consume very large amount of carbohydrates to suit the training load. If an athlete consumes food groups which ensure grains, pulses, fruits and vegetables, particularly if you are a vegetarian athlete, it is easily possible to get the recommended dietary intake of the fiber. With a vegetarian diet and high intake of carbohydrates, particularly also those including the Macrobiota accessible carbohydrates can be sometimes a challenge which can lead to gas or flatus. The fermentation of these fibers leads to gases as carbon dioxide, hydrogen and methane. These gases of course lead to bloating and letting go of wind. So is there a way an individual can incorporate max? without having to go through this side effect? Yes. One way is to add these fibers in the diet gradually, particularly if you are not used to consuming large amounts of fibers in your diet. Also note that you may want to distribute the fiber intake across the meals throughout the day and not just overindulge in the intake of pulses, grains and salad in one single meal that can lead to the high fiber load in that meal making the bloating worse. Also, not only just spreading this fiber across the meals but ensuring adequate hydration can ease this process. Also in my practice, I have seen better compliance where athletes can consume a high fiber meal away from the training and also during the day to ease the process of digestion and also lower flatus. So to summarize, a varied plant-based diet offers macrobiota accessible carbohydrates, max improve the gut microbiome and support good bacteria thereby fighting pathogens and infection. The fermentation of these prebiotic fibers improve immune function, nutrition absorption and also help manage body composition. And most importantly, in athletes with high training load, the fermentation of MAX can help lower the risk of infections, which is upper respiratory tract infection. Thank you for your patience and thank you for listening.